Right now, we're looking at perhaps one of the biggest financial crises in human history. One of the biggest financial crises in human history. You're see, people don't know. If you listen to these people, nobody knows what's going on. Where did all that money go to? It just disappeared. What does Allah say in the Quran? يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى وَيُرْبِ sadaqat. Allah will make interest vanish. That's what the Quran says. يَمْحَقُ اللَّهُ الرِّبَى Allah will make interest vanish. يَمْحَق That's what it means. It means to make it vanish. It just disappears. It just disappears. وَيُرْبِ sadaqat. But He will cause charity to increase. He causes charity to increase. Arriba. The hadith says, Arriba to Eddi il al Fakr wa in kathurat. That interest, usury, leads to penury, to poverty, to impoverishment, even if it multiplies vastly. There are Muslims here in our community that bought houses, that finagled their mortgages, that put things, they lied about their income. Fraud! Right after the verses in Baqarah about riba comes the verses about contracts and writing contracts justly and not lying. There were people that had five, six houses. They were driving in nice cars and now they have nothing. They have nothing. Because of greed, human greed. They had five or six houses and there are people on this planet. There are over 200,000 slums on this planet. Out of the 20 biggest slum countries, 10 of them are Muslim. 10 of them are Muslim. Some of the biggest slums in the world are in Muslim countries. There are people in Cairo that live off the garbage heaps, that go and live off what other people throw away. This is the type of planet we live on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about neglecting the needs of these people, about neglecting the needs of the poor, the hungry, while well, people are so busy with their wealth accumulation, they forget that not only do they have far more than they need, but there are other people that have far less than they need. If they concern themselves with those people, Allah promises that their wealth will multiply, either in this world or the next world, and it will multiply in this world. Those people will be taken care of. Shaytan ya'idukum al faqr Shaytan promises you poverty. Everybody's afraid now. Everybody's afraid. They're seeing their 401ks swallowed up. They're worried about their retirement. Well, it's just another day in Bangladesh. It's just another day in Mauritania. It's just another day in Nigeria. It's just another day in the vast majority of this planet. All these people that are afraid, welcome to the world. Welcome to the world. Welcome how the vast majority of people living on this planet experience the world. Only those people don't fear because when you have nothing to lose, you're invincible. When you have nothing to lose, what are you afraid of? You're not worried about losing your stocks, are you? Because you don't have any stocks. You're not worried about losing your house because you live in a house made out of crates in Casablanca. And if it gets blown away by the wind, you just go out and collect more crates and make it again. I lived with Bedouin in the desert. I lived in a house made out of, of tree branches and sacks that were used for rice that were sewn together. That's how I lived for a year of my life. I, I don't have a problem. I know how, you, how much you need to live. But when, when you've got all this wealth and you think it's going to last forever, people think that their wealth will make them immortal. No, we're all going to die. We're all going to face God. And God's going to ask us. So I want to remind you of a hadith which is reiterated by Isa alayhi salam. This hadith says that on the Yawm al-Qiyamah, and it's a hadith Qudsi. The hadith says that on the Yawm al-Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
to all these people. And in, in, in the gospel, and this is something the Christians share with us, because in the gospel of Matthew, it says that Jesus tells the exact same story that the prophet Elias and him told. Now, some people say, oh, the prophet Elias and took it from Jesus. No, they took it from the same source. Because the one teaching Jesus was the one teaching the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what Jesus says and what the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say are the same. It's the same message. So Jesus says that there are going to be people on the day of judgment that God says to them, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was thirsty and you gave me thirst. Enter my paradise. And then there's another group that Jesus said that God will say to them, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. And I was thirsty and you didn't give me any drink. And then he banishes them. Now the Prophet ﷺ said that on Yom Qiyamah, God will say to all of humanity, God will say to those people that neglected the poor people, he will say, I was sick and you didn't visit me. And they'll say, you were sick, how could you be sick? You're the Lord of the world. And Allah will say, didn't you know so and so was sick and had you visited him, you would have found me there with him? I was hungry and you didn't feed me. You were hungry, how could you be hungry? You're the Lord of the world. My servant so and so was hungry and you didn't feed him. Had you fed him, you would have found me with him. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. They say, how could we do that? And he explains the same explanation. That should make all of us shudder. Because we have a duty and an obligation to those less fortunate. They're a tribulation. Allah has tried them with poverty, but he has tried us with wealth. And trust me, most of us, most of the people in this room, you're living like the kings of the Middle Ages. You're living better than the kings of the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. I was in the, the mansion of King Abdul Aziz in Ta'if. It was his palace. They said, this is Qasr al-Mirik Abdul Aziz. I was in his palace and I guarantee you most of us are living in better houses than that palace a hundred years ago. The way that kings lived a hundred years ago, with rare exception like Louis the Fourteenth or Muli uh, Ismail of Morocco, the way that most kings were living in the world is in less fortunate circumstances than many of us find ourselves in today. Really. But we don't think about the obligations that we have towards others, towards the less fortunate. We have poor people in this country. We have now refugees from hurricanes. We have people that houses were wiped out. And if you don't think God can do that to us, then, then you're deluded. You're in a complete state of delusion. We're living in one of the biggest fault lines in the world. God could literally destroy all of our homes. And then we're gonna be begging others for help. That's the reality of it. That's the human condition. So if you're not taking care of others, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not taking care of yourself. We have a lot to learn from this religion and we have yet to implement this religion.